So I'm Marie Wissabug and I am a graduating fellow at Boston IVF and I'm going to be joining Boston IVF as a reproductive endocrinologist and infertility specialist in the next few months. So what we're going to talk about today is the topic of how many eggs it takes to make a baby. This is a very common question but it has a very difficult answer because this number is highly variable. And so there isn't a specific number that will guarantee an outcome, but we do give estimates of how many eggs you potentially need to get during a retrieval to give you a high chance um, of having a live birth. And this number is really dependent on age. So both egg quantity and egg quality decrease over time and as we get older. For egg quantity, this is something that we can measure. And you'll probably hear this during your consultation. We measure it with things like AMH or anti-malarian hormone or through something called an AFC or an antral follicle count, which is basically an ultrasound. In contrast to quantity, for the quality of the eggs, we don't really have a good uh, way to measure quality and we really go by age. So the older we get, the quality starts to decrease. And what that is reflected as either a difficulty in achieving a blastocyst or if we do achieve a blastocyst, a higher chance of having chromosomally abnormal blastocysts. So the older we get, the more eggs we would need to give us a chance to have a baby. And the younger we are, we may need fewer eggs to get this outcome. And so this is very tied into the process of attrition during IVF. So what attrition is, it's basically this gradual reduction in the number of vi viable gametes that we have available for use. So I do wanna start off by saying, I don't want you to be intimidated by any of the numbers I'm going to state. These are just estimates. None of them will guarantee an outcome, but it's just so that when you come in for your initial consultation, that you're not shocked by these numbers, or when you come in for your egg retrieval, you're not shocked by the the change in the, from the starting number of eggs that you have um, leading up to how many embryos you have available for use. And so as a general rule of thumb, if we start off with let's say 10 eggs, of these 10 eggs, we expect about 80% of those to be mature and fertilized. So let's say we now have eight that have fertilized. And of those eight, we expect about 30 to 50% of those to lead to a blastocyst, which is an early stage embryo. So that's about three to four of those 10 that we started with. And from those three to four, how many of those will lead to a live birth? Now that's dependent on age. And so at the age of 30 to 35, we usually expect about 70% of these blastocysts to be chromosomally normal. So two to three from these three to four that we started off with. As opposed to maybe 30% being chromosomally normal as we approach age 40. So maybe only one embryo or one blastocyst from the three to four we started with. So from these 10 eggs that we had initially, we would expect about two to three embryos to be chromosomally normal in somebody who's around 30 to 35, and maybe just one um, as we approach age 40. So it's basically a numbers game, and the older an individual is, the more eggs we would ideally need um, to be starting with to have a higher chance of having a baby. I also want to mention that we recently published a study done here at Boston IVF um, trying to answer this very question of how many eggs do we need to have a baby. And what we found was that under the age of 35, we would basically need around nine eggs to, to have a baby. Around the age of 35 to 37, we'd need somewhere between 11 to 12 eggs. At the age of 38 to 40, somewhere around 18 eggs. If you're 41 to 42, up to 40 eggs. And over the age of 42, it would be somewhere around 67 eggs. The numbers I just quoted can sometimes be daunting. For example, achieving 67 eggs at the age of 42. This may take multiple cycles to achieve. And if we're unable to achieve that number, we do definitely have alternative methods here at Boston IVF um, that we can help assist you to be able to um, reach your goal of uh, family building. And again, these numbers I just mentioned are just an estimate and not a guarantee. Uh, these numbers aren't set in stone and every person will respond to IVF differently. And as mentioned again, it's dependent on age, but again, it's also dependent on other factors such as having different medical conditions like polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS, having diminished ovarian reserve, or other conditions that could potentially affect how you respond to IVF. And because this is a very um, personalized treatment, we're here to explain to you these numbers during your treatment cycle every step of the way. 
I do want to end by saying that a lot of what I explained will be um, reiterated and explained multiple times during your initial visit. We are here for you every step of the way um, and to help you achieve the main goal of um, building your family.